Hey everybody, welcome to Cousin Jack Carves. Today we're going to be unboxing the Tech Chic Deluxe Wood Carving Kit. So they reached out to me uh, in an email and they said, hey, would you take a look at our product? Uh, this is a product that's being sold on Amazon right now. And they are interested in me just taking a look, sharing my opinion with you. So that's what we'll do. We're going to cut open the box and see what's inside and we'll test the sharpness of the tools while we're at it. Let's get started. All right, so I'll grab my handy dandy Gerber EAB pocket knife and we'll get this box opened up here. By the way, um, this EAB is a wonderful little pocket knife. It takes your standard utility blades and it's made by Gerber. Nice and flat. I think it weighs two ounces or something like that. All right, let's see what's inside the box. Looks like we have a tool roll. And a bag with, looks like there's some gloves. Yep. A bag inside a bag. <laughs> All right, so here's some compound for honing and a strip of leather. Also for honing, we have a smooth side and the fuzzy side. Um, we'll talk about that. And the compound is in a little bit of plastic here. Let me get the EAB and cut that open. Uh, EAB, by the way, in this pocket knife stands for exchange a blade. So it's the Gerber EAB. All right, so we'll get our compound out of the plastic. There you go. And some tools. We'll take a closer look here. Whoops. And we have a sort of a rounded chisel with a shallow bevel on it. Interesting, okay. Put the cap back on. It's nice that they have these caps. I like that. And this one has a little bit of a skew to it, so kind of a skew uh, chisel. What's interesting, you can see this one is only beveled on one side, right? A lot of chisels have a bevel on both sides. And I can feel there's a burr on that edge right there. Uh, we'll get to the sharpness here in a minute. And what's this one? This profile is a regular square chisel. Also has a burr on it. So let's take a look at these gloves. Looks like they are size large. That makes me happy. And we'll just cut the bag open here. So you get two gloves and they are level five cut resistance. Excellent. Excellent. That's definitely what I would recommend. Let's just try one on here. See how it feels. Yeah, feels pretty good. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy to see that this kit comes with safety gloves. So many times uh, beginners neglect that <laughs> very important item when they're getting started. So two gloves and you know you can wear these on either hand so these do wear after a while you want to replace them and the fact that these can be worn on both both hands or either hand gives you an opportunity to wear one out and then use the other one. Excellent. All right more tools. And some knives. So be careful uh, unwrapping things, folks. These are sharp edges. Don't want to hurt yourself. So the knife has a protector on the very tip, but not along the cutting edge here. So you have to be careful when you're handling these. And this would be more or less your sort of a roughing knife. Got a bit of a, a 
sort of a clip point profile on there. And as I mentioned, we will check the sharpness on these tools. Let's take a look at this next one. This handle uh, material looks like walnut, so that's pretty good quality. Okay. All right, so another more or less larger roughing out type of knife. This profile looks uh, a little bit more like a, a tiny little upsweep to it with a point that you can use for doing some curling and scooping. All righty. Be careful putting these back on. <laughs> uh, so here's one that's a little unusual and uh, something I haven't used before. I could be wrong, but I believe that this blade profile is called a kiridashi. And you can see it's sort of a skewed angle, right? It's beveled on both sides. And there is, I think, a little bit of a burr there. We'll, uh, we'll check it out. Yeah, feels pretty good. And they just keep on coming. Let's see what this one looks like. Another larger knife. Now you can see this upsweep comes to sort of this tanto style point. Very similar to this one. Just the, the point that's different, really. Another walnut handle. And these handles, uh, they, they feel pretty good. The finish on them is not slick or slippery. And that makes me happy. And walnut is, like I say, um, pretty attractive wood to use, right? Looks good. So here's a gouge. This would be used for spoon carving primarily. The bevel on this is very, very small. That's, that's sort of interesting. Hmm. And it's got a ferrule here and where it meets the handle. Sort of a shallow sweep. I'm going to say that's maybe a number five. Could be a three. And here's a, a hook knife used for spoon carving. And again, just trying to be careful. Now this had uh, a little bit of tubing that was covering the very tip of it. It's still stuck inside the plastic here. Let me get that out. Here's so you can by the way, go to the hardware store, get yourself some plastic tubing. It comes in various sizes, right? And then you can use it to cover up different blades. So the hook knife, as I said, is for spoon carving. What's important to understand about this hook knife is this is a right-handed tool. It's beveled on one side, as you would expect with a hook knife. And the way that it's beveled, it's meant to be used with your right hand. So if you're a left-handed carver like me, uh, you may want to see if there's an option when you're ordering this kit, if there's an option to get a left-handed hook knife. This is a right-handed knife. It's one of the few tools that is specific to which handedness or which hand is your dominant hand. All right, so this looks like a detail knife. Lightweight, yeah, really lightweight. It's got a handle that's very similar to other manufacturers carving knives. Now this one is shinier and the finish feels different than what's being used on these other knives. 
This is, maybe they put an extra coat of finish on it. It feels, feels a little different and it's definitely more shiny. All right, so this is your standard whittling knife. Looks like a blade that might be an inch and a half altogether. So there we go. And one more to open. Let's see what we have here. And we'll take a look at the tool roll and see how that's set up. All right, so here we have another sort of a skew angle. This one's beveled on both sides of the blade. Unlike the first one we saw, there's a burr here and there's a little something going on here on this uh, edge. Looks like something got on it, but yeah, it's not rust. So then, let's take a look inside the tool roll. Trying to get a smell there to see if it smells like leather. Uh, this handle looks to be a nylon handle. You can clip it on or off. So you could fling that tool roll over your shoulder. It has clips on both ends, right? And buckles here in the, uh, in each end as well to close it up. So here you are. This flap would come open this way. It feels like leather. I believe the, uh, the advertisement on Amazon, I believe it says that it's leather. They have a pouch over here, and, and I guess you could put some tools into the pouch if you needed to. You could also throw the leather strop in here with the compound and such. Maybe even put your gloves in there if you rolled them up. And then we have some pockets. Let's see, what do we have? Three, six, nine, ten different pockets. And how many knives and stuff? Let's take a look here. Let's just get a count. So, three, six, seven, eight with the larger handles, and then three of these smaller profile tools. So, 11 altogether. Yep. And I guess you, you'd have to choose and decide how you want to put those into your tool roll. Some of these pockets, like this one right here, looks like it would be made for one of these smaller handle tools, right? If we take our gouge here, let's see if that fits into the pocket. So what's important is that this flap comes down, right, and covers up all the sharp stuff. That's a good idea, helps to keep you safe. And let's see, if we take one of these knives that has the sort of the broader profile, let's see how that fits into a pocket here. Yeah? And again, this will come down and cover that up. Okay, so there's the tool roll. Let's take a look at the edge on these tools and find out what we're working with, okay? We'll start with the gouge. Like I said, it has a really tiny little bevel on there. I do see some marks where they made that factory edge. Let's just take a look and Yeah, it has a little bite to it. Okay. Let's see if it will slice into some paper. Yeah, it wants to just kind of blunt the paper there. 
So yeah, I would probably work on this edge to get it sharper. It does cut. Um, put on a glove. <laughs> Be safe, folks. You know, they, they give you gloves for a reason. And uh, I do recommend wearing them. Let's try some end grain. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, I don't see any white lines or any marks that would indicate a, a nick or a problem. Handle feels pretty good. So there you are, the gouge. Let's grab a knife. This is the skew that's beveled on both sides. Yeah, so that's not struggling to get through the end grain. paper. Huh. Yeah, it's um, probably going to need some work, this edge. When I look at it, under the light, I can see a, a dark spot. Let me just check this edge really quickly. So one of the things you can do to check your edges to see if you have a nick in the edge uh, is to run it across your thumbnail. Now, if you're not comfortable doing this, don't do it. Yeah. So I can feel right there where that dark spot was. I can feel that there's a nick in that edge that needs to be buffed out or uh, taken to a stone. And there is a burr on here that needs to be buffed. So that's important. Let's take a look at a knife. Okay, I don't feel any any nicks in the edge. Seems sharp. Yeah. So yeah, this, this detail knife seems to work pretty well. No issues with that edge. Just check and see if I can feel a burr. Nope. Well, yeah, there's a little burr on this side. So, yeah, this could be buffed a little bit more just to get that wire edge, that burr, off. Um, and the way you do that, what I would recommend, you take this honing compound, right? Rub it on the fuzzy side of the leather. Use that with the compound to buff your knife or to hone your knife and then for your final finish come over here on the smooth side that's nice and clean and strop your knife on there after you've hit the fuzzy side with the compound. 
So this is the larger sort of roughing knife with the tanto point. Got a little bit of an upsweep. I don't feel any sort of burr or wire edge there. And Sonny is telling me, put that glove back on. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. Let's see what we can do here. These upsweep knives, by the way, the profile is very good for slicing. That's uh, something that the upsweeps are known for. So let's try the end grain. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Felt pretty good. Let's see what the hook knife will do. So if I were a right-handed carver, I would put this into my right hand and I would scoop with it. That's what we want to use when we're carving a spoon, right? It's digging in here. Let's try it on the end grain and see what we can see. One of the things I'm struggling with here is that the finish, when I'm holding this with the glove on, it's really slick, uh, hard, to, hard to really grip the handle. If it were me, of course, I would put an overgrip on the handle. All right, I'm just going to put this in my left hand for a second. Let's get on the point. Yeah. So part of this edge cuts pretty well. When you get out here onto the very tip, it's uh, maybe not quite as sharp. That's what I'm seeing with the spoon hook knife. Here's a rough out with a clip point. Seems to cut pretty well. Let's test it on some paper. Yeah. That's pretty sharp. And the rough out with sort of a sweep to it and the point on the end for doing some more fine sort of detail scoops like this. Cutting right through the end grain here. I do see a little, little white line right like that. That's usually indicative of a little bit of a nick. Sometimes you can just hone those out. Sometimes you have to go to a sharpening stone. I don't feel it on the paper. So it's got to be a very, very small nick, I would say. So it may be something that could be honed out. Let's take a look at this Kiridashi. I believe that's what the name is. So that digs right in. And let's. Uh, work on some end grain. Yeah, I'm kind of enjoying this. <laughs> so it's an interesting tool. Like I said, I have not used one of these before. Slices right through the old paper there. It's an interesting tool, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, moving on. We'll take a look at 
some of these smaller chisels. This has got a rounded edge and I should say rounded profile with the bevel on the bottom. So it's a, it's a chisel, kind of like a thumbnail chisel. Now this thing has uh, no sweep to it, it's flat. Okay. Let's work on some end grain for a second here. Yeah, it's kind of tough to get through the end grain. Will it cut the paper? Yeah, no. So this this one uh, could be sharper. Let's see about this square chisel. So it's a regular chisel profile with the squared edges. I can feel a burr on there that definitely needs some honing with the compound. It does cut the wood. It could cut better, I'm sure, once it's been honed. Yeah. And then this one is the skew that's only beveled on the one side, right? Seems to cut pretty well. We'll test it on the end grain. Yeah, it's not easy getting through the end grain there. And we'll just give it a shot on some paper. Yeah, it's got a, a rough edge that it creates on the paper. It will cut it, but it creates a rough edge. So that's another one that needs some honing um, in order to be more effective. So let's talk about this kit. And I'll let you know what I think here. So the number of tools or pieces, I should say, is a pretty good quantity, right? So there's a variety of knives, chisels, leather and compound, gloves, a tool roll. What do I think? So I'll tell you about these knives. We saw and tested them, and we could see some of them are fairly sharp. Uh, I think all of them should be honed before you use them. Again, that's with your compound and your leather. Hone the tools before you use them. A sharp knife is a safe, safe, uh, safe knife. One of them, this one right here, appears to have a nick in the edge that needs to be corrected. Okay. It, it can be corrected. And one of the other things that I would recommend, so what, what would make it better? These knives, like many of the manufactured knives that you would find, have a square edge on the spine of the blade right here. So that square edge can cause your thumb to be sore. If you're pushing on that for hours, You've got a sharp point on this 90 degree angle of the edge and a sharp point on this 90 degree angle of the edge. So how do you fix that? Well, for me, what I would do, I would recommend taking some sandpaper or a metal file, you name it, a Dremel, and rounding the edges on the spine of these knives. Now that's something, if they take the time to do that in the factory, would make it even better. So yes, I do recommend taking off the sharp corners on the spine of these knives.
So what else would I recommend? You can see right here, there's a hole, right? These knives have a tang, piece of metal, that's air injected into the handle, right? There's no seam on this handle. They drill the hole and inject the tang. It probably goes back about this far into the handle. The problem that I see here is the hole. If you're going to be honing your knives on a sharpening stone, a water stone in particular, or even an oil stone, some of that slurry from the water um, or oil can get down inside the hole and cause corrosion. So what I would recommend is taking some epoxy and filling in the hole on the knives. That um, can definitely make your knives last longer and keep or prevent any of the slurry from a water stone or an oil stone even wood chips from getting down inside the handle of your knife. Again, at the factory, if uh, they took the time to put in some epoxy here, that would be even better. Now, this kit is listed right now, I think around $69. So let's just, let's call it $70. So the value for what you get um, yeah, it's probably a pretty good value because if you paid individually for all of these different things, it would probably cost you more than $70. So, for example, the leather and the compound, you probably spend $12 to $15 to get. Uh, these smaller tools, let's just say you spent $10 a piece, right? Yeah, that's not unheard of. The knives, you know, you could probably wind up paying $20 a piece for each individual knife. A pair of gloves like this, you can probably get for somewhere between $12 to $15. And a tool roll uh, like this one with 10 pockets made out of leather, yeah, you're probably going to pay $30 or $40 at least. So yes, if you were to go out and purchase all of these things individually, you'd spend more, likely spend more than $70 to get the kit. Now this is kind of being marketed as a beginner's kit. And what I would say is if you're a beginner, if you're really just starting out, you may not need a kit that has all of these choices in it. And what I say, I guess what I'm getting at here is decide what it is you want to carve, number one. For example, if you want to carve figures, caricature figures and so on, what do you really need? Well, I would recommend a, a rough out knife, a smaller detail knife, a pair of gloves, a hone with some compound, probably one medium-sized V-tool, and one medium-sized kind of gouge, probably with a number 9 or number 11 sweep on it. And that would get you started. See if you enjoy it and want to continue. Now, if you wanted to carve spoons, I would recommend the hook knife, this gouge, and probably this kind of Sloyd style profile knife right here, along with the gloves, the leather and the compound, and, uh, and that would kind of get you started as a spoon carver. So you may need less than all of these tools. And that's what I would share with beginners is if you're going to buy a kit, think about what you're going to use from the kit. You don't want to buy tools that you're not going to use. Something to, to really consider just to get you started. And I would love to see 
a manufacturer put together the very basic beginner kit for whittling or wood carving figures and one for spoon carving and then call it a day. Now, if you're interested in both, you want to do figures and you want to do spoon carving as well, this might be the kit for you. It certainly has a lot of pieces. Um, now, whether these, these edges hold up, you know, will they hold an edge over time? I don't know yet. It's hard to really make any kind of a judgment on that. Uh, the advertisement says that these blades are made from carbon steel, which is good. Walnut handles are also good. So some parts of it look pretty impressive. And those are my thoughts. Um, take a look. It's the Tech Chic Deluxe Wood Carving Kit on Amazon. Like I said, currently listed around $69 and change if you're interested. And uh, we'll put a link in the description below for anyone who wants to check it out. Thanks for joining me today, folks. We'll see you next time.